Assemblywoman Mary Beth Walsh, thanks so much for being here. I'm happy to be here, thanks. Anytime. So the school year is starting and I know a lot of parents and a lot of teachers are really concerned about bringing their kids back to class. We've been planning this for three, four months. What do you right. think of the state's plan to reopen schools? Have we done enough? Are we ready to do it? Well, it's been really tough because um, the way it's gone down is, you know, it, let's just back up a little bit and think about um, the reopening plans that were due in what was really a very short time frame. And then there was guidance that came out, I would say, um, took a little longer to come out than we thought. Um, so schools were scrambling to put together the reopening plans. Then they've got to basically, in the, in the governor's words, sell it to the, to the parents and the students and the teachers about how it's going to work. And then every school district is different. But then we look at what happened in SUNY Oneonta um, just a few days ago, and that makes us all um, take a pause and think about what this really means, that even though upstate uh, where I am, there isn't, um, there isn't as much of an incidence of the, um, of the virus. It, it's still um, very concerning that, it's, uh, that, that something like SUNY Oneonta could have that number of cases in such a short period of time. It's scary. And then, you know, yeah. if, I don't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but if I was a parent yeah. and I saw what happened in SUNY Oneonta, and then I'm sending my kid to, um, you know, for example, like Binghamton High School, it's it's very crowded in there, very packed, a lot of students, and you think, oh my gosh, is the same thing going to happen with my kid in the next few days? Right. We're really asking an institution as critically important as our educational system to be so nimble, possibly more nimble than they really can be. So it, it, we're really putting an awful lot on our school districts and our teachers, parents and students. And uh, I feel like it's a, it's, a, it's a leap, but it's a cautious leap. And I think that everyone's given it a lot of consideration. And um, I'm crossing my fingers with everybody else that it's gonna work out okay. So how do we make this easier on schools? We have um, you know the wait and see option that some people wanna take where they think like we just have to see it play out and that might be okay, but then what else can we do? Do you think it, that it's more guidance from the state, more direction, or is this really, does it come down to funding? Because some schools I know are having a really hard time implementing a lot of these guidelines and a lot of this guidance because they don't have the money to give their kids tablets for remote learning or to bring extra teachers in. Um, in fact, we, we've seen the layoffs. So I guess, how, how does this get easier for schools? I think probably the greatest favor that we could do um, as a state would be to let, this, let the districts know financially really what they're looking at. You know, I did a Zoom call the other day with um, individuals from the United Teachers, from NYSET, very, very concerned. And, and uh, there were also members from Wish We BOCES, which is in my district, um, you know, very concerned about the withholding of the 20% that they've received so far. We've seen, as you noticed, uh, as you noted, uh, cuts uh, in Schenectady City Schools and Albany City Schools. And, you know, we really just don't know. We know sales tax is not fully recovered. We don't know what quarter four is going to look like. So I wish that we could, my greatest wish was that would be to let the school districts know how bad is it going to get? What is the number that's going to have to get covered so that they can make appropriate plans? I think right now it is so up in the air. It's incredibly frustrating for all of us to not really know um, what the rest of the year was going to look like financially and what we can do. Is there anything you th think the state should do to provide more funding to schools? I know there are a few proposals like uh, Assemblyman Angelo Santa Barbara right here from the capital region like yourself wants to take um, more of the state lottery fund and divert that to schools. Do you have any thoughts on where you think the money should come from to give these schools what they desperately need to comply with this guidance? Right. So um, I, I read uh, about Angelo uh, Santa Barbara's idea and I do see some merit in that because I think that when the lottery was first rolled out, it it was always intended that the proceeds were going to go to education. And somehow it became a thing where it just, and I think got just dumped into the general funds. So that's definitely something that we could look at. You know, I also, um, I'm put my glasses on so I can give you some numbers, but we do have a couple of different pots of money that we could 
um, access. We have reserve funds. We have a rainy day reserve fund right now with 1.218 billion in it. Uh, we have a tax stabilization fund with 1.258 billion in it. And uh, there are rules for accessing, you know, either one of those funds, but I would say rainy day funds just by the way that we just as people would understand them would be a situation like this where we have right. this is quite the rainy day. <laughs> it's raining. I mean, it's yeah. raining. So I, I, I think it is so important that we um, are willing to consider anything um, that could provide help. But I think, you know, I sit with 149 other assembly members and state senators, and I, I would think that there would be some good ideas that I would love to listen to from my colleagues, because I think that this is a, a case where there isn't one person who has one solution that's going to work. I think we need to all think hard and think think out of the box, too, so that we can try to be helpful to our educational institutions and families. When you're speaking to school districts and teachers, what are they telling you that they want to use that money for? I feel like there might be a disconnect between the concept of needing all of this money for something and not knowing what it's going to be spent on. So is it just to prevent those teacher layoffs that we've seen at schools around the region? Or is it to buy uh, equipment and supplies and personal protective equipment for inside schools? I mean, yes, all of, all of the above, you know, and I think you know, what I think a lot of people maybe that don't have children in school right now uh, may not realize is just the extent, um, all the things that we ask schools to be these days. And um, what I hear from teachers and um, from family members, they're concerned across the board. Um, we know that things like uh, virtual education, we have big issues as far as broadband and connectivity, especially here, oh, while I don't represent the North Country per se, close to here, uh, close to where I represent, there are families that you know, don't have access to the kind of technology that they need in order to allow for virtual learning. So there's this, this COVID crisis has really kind of unearthed and exposed a lot of problems. And I don't think a lot of people realize how even districts that on the face of it look like they do very well, um, how the loss or withholding of 20% really can set everybody really spinning, so. All right, well, we will be watching it over the next couple of weeks as these cuts continue to get rolled out. Um, hopefully they can be saved in some way, shape or form. Assemblywoman Mary Beth Walsh, thanks so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure, really, anytime. Yeah.